<laughs> What's up, ho? Bitch, you called me, bitch. We on live stream. What's good? Bitch, your face look like a thumb. Your face looks Damn. like a fucking swollen raisin, bro. You look like my left nut when I shave my balls. You look like a dirty a homeless person who smells his own feet on the street, bro. <laughs> Hey, we got the whole stream uh, watching right now, and probably a lot of them like you. So what's your message to all the fans out there? Creation and evolution is the purpose of the human mind. What you say? You, you heard that, motherfuckers. <laughs> you get offended when I call you XXX tentacles? <laughs> uh, no, call me ZZZ Tentacion. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta switch it over. That'd be fire, bro. Get a, get a, get a new letter instead of X. Z, Z, Z. <laughs> Yo, awesome shit. I need niggas to save the zebras, fam. The zebras? Why are you pissed off? Are they are they going extinct? Yeah, I'm not Better fucking with them. Cause they're not saying something about the earth. We need to save the zebras, bro. Yeah, Good off that. Yeah, I'm dead ass as well. fucking serious, my nigga. Like, save the zebras, my nigga. Stop killing the fucking zebras, my nigga. The zebras deserve to live too, my nigga. We all deserve to live. You know, a lot of people out there probably didn't think that you were concerned with the environment or with endangered species or anything. I do, bro. I've been manifesting all of my energy into these fucking storm stopping. That's far. Hey, yo, you know, technically, this is your second No Jumper interview right here. Ooh. Yeah, auntie. Second No Jump on my dick. <laughs> hey, isn't it crazy that we did that interview and then we both went on to, be, to like, make a ton of money and, like, kind of wow the fuck out? You make money? <laughs> <laughs> not, as, not as much as you, Mr. Fucking 50K a show. What's good? No, I get more than that. Yeah, I know, but you getting right. fifty like it's nothing. Oh. I get, I get basically like a hundred k. Dude, you're a dickhead. That's why I don't fuck with you. I, I get, I, you know, I got a couple hundred k, whatever, but I ain't got a hundred k for one show to run back and forth and look like a no, fucking. The reason, the reason okay. I get a hundred k now is just because I'm like I won't do it unless I get it because I know my worth. Like, see, the thing is, I can't adjust my worth to the time because if I adjust my worth to the time, it's gonna take forever to just reach that. So I'm just like, yo. I'm like, fuck it, I'm running it up, my name hot, and they're they going to pay it if they want me. So if they don't want me, if they, it depends on how bad they want me, because I'm going to bring out like 5,000 people. Oh, yeah, easy, bro. Like, if, if, yeah, you bring out, what happened with that Tampa show? The shit got shut down? Bro, I just, bro, if, uh, I went, bro, they broke my side, man, when they got went inside of me. Huh? Oh, my nipples God, are they are different yeah. nipples. She swear to God. I swear to God. How many girls you got with you right now? I think I recognize that voice, X. It's different. <laughs> Ow, it's different. <laughs> Hi, Taylor. How you doing? Well, how are you? Where's your lady? Where's my girlfriend? She's right here, Lena. Come stand right here. Hi, Taylor. Hey, boo. Hi. Yo. What's up? Can you let me fuck your girlfriend? <laughs> I don't know, bro. What? You got, you, you got a weird dick. I do demonic things. <laughs> I know that's the scary part. If I thought you were bad in bed, then I would be more open to the idea. But because I think you probably fuck like a weirdo. <laughs> yeah, I'd be on some super demonic shit. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, I feel like I feel like you would do something to her that would scar her, and she like wouldn't be the same person afterwards. Oh, man. It wouldn't scar her. I just I just basically like I bond people through loyalty. Like. I've just I just have such an immense love and like just an immense everybody's in love with me whether they realize it or not. I'm not in love with you, Ax. I'm sorry to break it to you. She says she's uh, not in love with you. I'm not in love with you, I'm sorry to break it to you. Not yet. Oh. Are you in love with Taylor? And in love with everyone. I love everyone. I sound shallow when I'm saying that, but it's not it, that's not even what it is. It's just myself as like as a being, I just represent the equilibrium of the universe in itself. You just have to understand your purpose and understand that you are a divine being. So in my preachings or in what I'm going to be, eventually everyone will come to know of what I'm trying to teach or what I was and will love me. It won't be now. Probably be after I die. But... When do you plan on dying? Mm, probably like 25. Probably like 25, 27. 25, huh? Good year. I don't think they'll want me to be alive while my kid's alive. Because if, if, if we are, then I'll just rule the earth. 
How do you feel about selling 85,000 fucking copies in your first week? It's a lot more than most people would have predicted. I don't really care about it. I just, I care about the loyalty of the people. Like, it's not going to be, like, the way I look at it is if I was enslaved again, are my fans going to have my back? Is there going to be riots? Is there going to be people trying to storm? Like, if I ever got, like, I don't even want to put that out there, but if I was ever, like, like in danger or put in a situation that I should not be in, who's going to actually have my back? Who's going to break me out of whatever I'm in? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, okay, that's the thing that's crazy about it is that it's not like you had any, like, wild-ass viral single or anything like that. It's like the fact that you sold so many copies is unbelievable because of the fact that it did come from your fan base and shit. It's not, you didn't have some wild song that like, you didn't have a hotline bling that had every motherfucker on earth dancing or some shit like that. It was all actual like diehard fans more or less. Because it's all genuine energy, bro. I'm a very genuine person if you haven't noticed. Like I can't be fake. It's not in me. I won't say anything about someone that I wouldn't say to their face. And if they don't like it, then it is what it is. But I'm the type of nigga to, to pretty much say it, like what's on my mind. And if someone can't appreciate that, then they're really not a good person. Well, I got a lot of respect for you for making like the album that you wanted to make because you really didn't compromise at all in the sense that you, you didn't make a song on the album that sounded like the songs that made you famous. Yeah, fuck that. What's the point? Then I'm not an artist. Then I'm a conformist. It's a beautiful thing. Because then I'm conforming to the, everyone else's ideals, and that's not an artist. It's being able to know that everyone's judgment doesn't matter because in the end of the day, you are you, and you are the art. When you let someone else's vision basically portray what you are, then you're not really art. You're a puppet. Beautiful. Hey, how do you feel about them trying to paint you as some fucking psychopath for... Uh... I like it. For, well, no, but for the suicide thing, because to me, I thought it was nothing, and people are talking about it like you're the fucking devil again. I want to know why? What? Because the full visual hasn't come out, so I like that they hate me for now. What What is that uh, video for? What song? The, that video is going to equalize everything. It's going to open a lot of people's eyes, and it's going to literally put me at the center of Earth. You think it's going to be that big? Because, I mean, it's pretty out of... It's, it's incredible. It's beyond me thinking it already is. It's incredibly out of the ordinary that you haven't done a video yet. Why is that? And you're going to see why. It's going to drive you fucking insane. I'm ready, bro. <laughs> I'm on some next shit. Like, like nobody, nobody is really picturing the bigger picture. But it's going to basically... Like I said, I'm, my whole center of existence is the equilibrium. I don't believe... I believe in yin and yang. I believe that one cannot exist without the other, and unless unless we learn to know that and appreciate the idea of yin and yang, we will basically be so fucking void-minded yeah. that we will create a void on this planet, and then we're going to just ruin the game for the future and ruin the game for all of us. And then I'll soon it, like, people don't even have the mind to realize that, bro, this is your world, and what, uh, we're also living in someone else's world. We're going to fuck around and let these dumbasses that rule our fucking planet, my nigga, create hell for all of us that we don't deserve. Yeah. So unless people really take power for themselves, bro, I feel like they matter. Unless people really get the fuck off the internet and start paying attention to what's going on in their life, the energy you apply is going to be towards nothing. Do you think your energy you're... controls the world? Do you think you're becoming more like aware of uh, like social or spiritual issues as you get older? I've been aware. I've just never cared to speak on it because I don't want I don't want anybody feeling like they have to target me or kill me to, <laughs> for speaking the truth. And I'm not with that. I'm not willing to put myself and my family at risk just for the ex exposement. But I say things that have, have already been published before, and like, but I like I, I I'm ahead. I just don't express it. There's no need to. Because I just I do things behind the scenes that people aren't even aware of that I do. Let me ask you something. Eric Andre came out and said basically <laughs> that people shouldn't support you because you have been violent to women in the past. How do you feel when somebody comes out with that uh, narrative? Mm, from a judgmental perspective, um, I understand it. It's not ignorant, but it is ignorant at the same time because... 
for one, who the fuck are you to judge me? Because behind closed doors, for all I know, you rape women. For all I know, you beat your wife. For all I know, you mentally neglect your own mother. For all I know, you do horrible things to the people around you. You know what I'm saying? Confor- like, mm. like the re- regardless of what everyone's mm. assumption is on that situation. I mean, obviously, like, I can understand. <clears throat> like, to put it in a, a broad perspective, violence, period, is not okay. Violence, period. Like, I don't stand for violence anymore at all, period. Like, I just think it's pointless. Because if someone doesn't respect your mind, then they just don't respect you as a being. So then you just agree to go your separate ways. But I feel like him as a man, especially being, he's probably like in his like 30s, right? Pro- uh, probably late 20s, maybe. I don't know. Him, him as a man, probably being in like his 30s to judge a 19-year-old before making an educated assumption and before like thoroughly judging, like thoroughly <laughs> getting information and going through the full perspective of my situation judging beforehand is a pretty pussy thing to do like and i don't i don't really care for i don't really like that's just a general thing like if you're gonna judge before like understanding something then you're you're a weak person you're not smart you can't if you can't put yourself in the shoes of someone else then you're not a smart person okay let me ask this do you f- and I'm I'm sort of taking you know the devil's advocate here because we're being recorded and I just w- I'm, I feel like I'm asking questions on the behalf of what other people would want to hear me ask about. So, would you say that you've made mistakes and that you feel like you have like a history of violence towards women that you regret and and that and you've done things that you wouldn't do in in the in the future? I I have a history of mental neglection towards women. Yes, mental. As far as like, I always felt the need to want to control a woman. I always felt the need to want to, like, to, like, I guess, confine them and, like, I want to control them. But now, like, as I've evolved as a human being and, like, just being locked up for even things that I didn't do, like, on some shit, like, it's made me fully appreciate the freedom of a woman and made me understand feminine energy to the point to where like, yeah, I'm like this. You know what I'm saying? But, like, it's like... Yeah, so I'm not being shallow at all when I do that, but I'm just saying like the reality of that is, it's turned so much to where I naturally compel women because I understand the freedom of feminine energy and understand that like constricting anything is or, 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 or sorry refining anything is never a good thing ever. Like just period. I always felt the I always felt the need to control, but I always felt the need to control off of being scared. Off of being insecure, off of like not feeling like I was enough, always felt that need. But the sooner you realize that your center of being is what's important, if you're not a centered being, that nothing's gonna come to you. That what you want, you look, and you think, know the importance of being like centered around yourself, and then you know the importance of like the fact that only you can comfort you. Only you, only you will be enough for you. Interesting. All right. Hey, here's another question. After that album, which was like a deeply personal, it's like, a, you know, the, the cover had like these scraps of paper. This like it has this very diary type feel. Yeah, papers from jail, actual, actual papers from jail. Yeah. All right. So where do you go from there? Like what, what, where do you go from there with your next project? Have you even put thought into that yet? <laughs> you should never have ever ask that because that's, that's what my whole fucking center of being is, is, pro- is thinking. Thinking. Yeah, it's like, what did the project make you do? Okay, but if anything, do you think your problem is that you just create so much shit that the putting it out part is the hard part? No, I don't. I don't make endless. Get the door. I don't make endless like void material. I'm not like, like no offense to to, to other rappers, but I'm not like I'm not like, I'm not like Little Uzi. Like a Little Uzi can go make songs. And like drop them, you know what I'm saying? And have no like intent behind them. They'll just write them to drop them, just on some soft shit. Like I don't be on that. Like I like everything I write is very conscious, and I do everything for a reason. Even if it doesn't take effect immediately, I do everything for a reason. Everything. So like my whole my whole center of nature. Like if you go to my old shit, like I've got songs about raping priests and doing crazy shit. People don't really dabble into it. Like, I got a song called The Lone Part 2 where I talk about the darkest thoughts of my mind or different realms of realities that I've, that I've lived that I felt like I was, that I've, when I felt like I was a demon. Like, 
I take you from the darkness and elevate you into a light. Hold on. Well, I'm... She just wants to make sure that she's going to have a ride tomorrow. Yeah, you, you're good. Yeah, you're good. You're going to have a ride. Yeah, you're good. But I take, you, I take you to the darkest parts of your mind and then help you elevate outside of your mind on a different vibration that's not really corny. People like to call it corny, but it's the truth. I say things that people don't want to say. And there's, like, other artists that do that, you know what I'm saying, and I appreciate those artists because I've been inspired by, like, a lot of people and have willed me towards being honest, you know what I'm saying, with my music. But I just feel like the whole pro the whole process of elevation and evolution is the most important thing. So I feel like I can help people ascend from darkness to light. And that's what I, my music has been. Because there's not anything that... You, like, you can, you can go listen to certain artists... And then you can't get what you want from them. You can't listen to me and not get what you want. Because if you want some soft shit, okay, go listen to OK Shorty. If you want some serious shit, go listen to Seventeen. If you want some dark, demonic shit, go listen to my old shit. Go listen to Alone Part 2. If you want some super rap conscious shit, go listen to Riot or Rare Part 2. There's nothing that I can't do. I can do everything. I'm the king I'm the king of music. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. I'm very, I'm, I'm very well aware of it because I can do anything. I mean, when I look at you in comparison to like the other people in the underground and especially, you know, a lot of people who are a couple years older than you, I think that that is like the main thing that kind of stands out to me is that you've done the most to go outside the realm of like typical rap music musically. And that's why you're a big outlier in comparison to a lot of other people in that it's scene. A form of, it's a form of unifying the minds without them realizing subconsciously I'm unifying people's minds they're not gonna realize I'm a genius until I'm dead it's fire it's like super fire because no one's gonna realize I'm a genius until I'm dead no one's gonna realize the role I took was divine was very very divine that I'm helping people's minds and putting their energy somewhere that they didn't re like because they're no matter how you look at it your void energy your bad energy goes somewhere it doesn't just revolve around you bro it goes to the world for the world to eat so people don't realize that their state of mind is affecting the universe in itself. So all I'm doing is unifying people's mind, minds and putting their energy somewhere else. Instead of being, like, I'd, I'd much rather people be sad all the time than being fucking angry and destroying the earth. I'd, rather, I'd much rather bring you down to ground level than have you on such a fucking power binge. Like, a, like, like I went from being crazed to, to slowing down and really realizing and theory, like, theorizing everything before I did it and realizing that how, how powerful my energy is and how powerful my music is to just add on to the equilibrium. I want the equilibrium to exist for, I, I want it. I don't want it to end and the world does not have to end if the human minds can get themselves together. Whoa, bro. You fucked me up. <laughs> <laughs> it, I, I'm on some weird shit, bro. I, I, but I don't stand for it empowerment of anything except equity i don't give a fuck about anyone's personal views or opinions or anything the whole thing is the equilibrium equity and keeping everything maintained and that's why i kind of fuck with the government if you want me to be honest like i like there was a point where i learned about the truth of what is hidden from certain minds and things that aren't supposed to like that thing that that aren't for people to see like in the clear in, in plain sight and I understand why it's hidden because certain people should not have access to certain knowledge because if they get access to certain knowledge, they have access to certain power and then it throws the equilibrium off. It throws the, the equity of the earth in itself off its axis. So that's why like you notice like energies affect the work, the, like the world in itself. Like nigga, our planet will go into retrovert at random times or we'll get like time changes that we're like bro it just be weird shit going on that people don't understand because they don't understand what they're doing with their fucking energy and nobody realizes how important they are you don't realize like how, that you like, i'm not even gonna say it but nobody realizes how important they are just on some weird shit like bro, like people think i'm stupid but i'll, I'll just play stupid i like it because i'm not i don't want to be a king i want to be a joker i'm okay with being the jack or the joker you've been calling yourself like the king of the underground for a while now i, I don't believe you when you say you don't want to be the king i think it's pretty obvious that you have very very big plans to be i'm, I'm anointed i'm anointed that role but it's i'm not gonna take the i'm not gonna take the role because i don't want to control anyone a king is made to control and to navigate 
I can only give the advice. I'd like to be someone's brother before I'd like to be their leader. Because there's more respect in that. And there's no need to, to declare mutiny. I don't want to work myself in the image of the Messiah. Because I don't want to be crucified for anyone. You I, don't... Think I think everybody needs to just fucking relax. <laughs> and, anybody, and, I, and if you ask me, I think anyone that doesn't want to relax, I think we should fucking kill them. I think we should knock them off. I feel like relaxing is the last thing that you've been doing or that your fans seem to be doing. It's not exactly like a Grateful Dead show, typically at an X show. Because they're not on my state. They're not on my wavelength yet, but my music is going to bring them there. Okay. So do you have any complaints about your fans? No. I love them to death. I, wish, I, I want them to be more considerate of what they do and be more mindful when they, when they fucking like rush, like rush my car and break my side windows and shit, but... <laughs> it's, it's, it's okay like like I like I can't complain you think they like I, that's kind of like the weird thing that they've almost like dehumanized you in a way when they could just treat you like that they treat me like God yeah, yeah. but I, fu I fuck with it because like they, like no one gets to see the Christian God <laughs> <laughs> no gets, like no one no one gets to see like God like people gamble their lives with a God they cannot see uh huh so the reality of, is, of it is, like, as a superstar, I'm the closest thing they get to see of an outer world, like an out otherworldly energy. Because it's, it, what nobody realizes is the energy being my mind, my soul, my soul energy is what they want to feel. Because my mind and my thought process is so diverse and so weird that my energy attracts these people. And that's what it is to be a superstar. You have to have outer worldly energy or have a thought process like no other. And that's how people are attracted to you because then they're naturally they're naturally compelled to you. If you don't have naturally compelling energy, then you really are just you're just not vibrant. You're not on the, the wave of the of the universe in itself. You're not a child of infinity. Shout out to all the bros. <laughs> All right. No. Anything else you want to share with the world? This has been a fun little uh, impromptu interview. Be fearless. Be without fear. If you if 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 you're fearful, you'll be controlled. You'll be afraid to go outside. You'll be afraid to do anything. Go outside. Soak up the sun. The more time you spend in the darkness, sometimes there has, like I said, there has to be an there has to be an equalizer. There has to be an equal. You have to understand the process of the equilibrium. You have to maintain the balance. If you don't maintain the balance, then you fall off the axis. And if we fall off the axis, everything as we know it starts to crumble. I got you. I'm going to try to stay on the axis. <laughs> You're such a dick. You are. Hey, uh, take, good, take good care of Taylor for me. Yeah, she's been, she's been really good. She's a good person. I think you guys are a really great couple. I love it. I'm not a couple. I don't want to be with anyone. Yeah, he's a side guy. She's my best friend. She's my best friend. My best friend. I'm going to make him my best friend. Ooh. Ooh. She's got good pussy too, though. Hey, have you hung out with Kodak yet, or you just do that song with him? I just did that song with him. I feel like Kodak don't fuck with me. <laughs> <laughs> For real? But he just had that fucking song? I feel like you don't fuck with, I feel like you don't fuck with anybody, though. But, like, I, like, see, the thing is, like, with me... I'm a very, I don't want to call him ingenuine because I, I haven't met him, so I don't want to make that assumption, nor would I throw that disrespect on anyone's name. But I feel like I'm the type of person where I'm very, I'm very personal. Like, I like to, like, when I work with people, I like to fuck with people, or if I do something, it's for a higher purpose. So really and truly, like, I did that song just for the sake of the fact that I felt like it was unifying energies in Florida and, like, really capitalizing because the whole Atlanta movement was just that like Atlanta rappers were fucking with each other keeping it going and like motivating each other like you know what I'm saying and like there was a system so I felt like doing that because usually what happens is Broward rappers or Florida rappers get big they beef then they fall off mm -hmm. that's what it usually is and you know so what the, the the biggest rap scenes the strongest rap scenes are always the scenes where the big stars work together to to make exactly. everything bigger exactly because then like it's like understanding that everybody's the navigator of their own destiny. The only per the only people that ever become a problem is the one that wants to be the god of everybody. Mm -hmm. The one that feels the need to rule other minds. Why do you feel the need to to 
roll uh, someone. That's very insignificant. Your energy should naturally be compelling. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. If you feel the need to want to empower, like, sorry, empower yourself over someone, and you feel the need to want to hurt someone, or you feel the need to, like, go outside of your own realm into someone else's dimension and fuck with their shit, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> I don't feel the need, like, I don't feel the need to control anyone anymore. Like, I, I don't I don't like it. Like, I, that was the first thing I got out of as soon as I opened my eyes. You know, I, I what? You don't notice it, though. Like, like after this, after we finish this conversation, you'll find yourself trying to control things around you that don't need to be controlled. All right, l- check this out. Remember, we saw each other like a couple weeks ago for the first time, and like since the interview. Yeah. All right. So this is this was kind of my analysis of you to other people, and I'm gonna tell. I'm just gonna be honest about what I said, and you can tell me if you agree. I basically yeah. said that, you know, to me, you're a person who you were very comfortable in a way when I met you because you had all this talent, you had all this passion and all this desire and, but you were still in the very, very early stages of manifesting it, you know? And then by the time I saw you a couple of weeks ago, it was like kind of jarring because I was like, this is a kid who just made more money than he could ever spend, has more girls than he could ever fuck. He has, you know, everything at his disposal, more fame than he could ever want. But you're still. What your thoughts are on that? Like, if you agreed with me. I won't me. be happy about shit unless I know that the youth gets a chance at a future, bro. Because at this rate, bro, like the the fucking navigators of our destiny, which are being like, the ones that are ruling our country, the one like, bro, like the random fucking hurricane. Like, I'm not. I'm sorry. Random hurricanes and all this crazy shit. Like, some of this shit is not necessary, bro. So like the endless, the mindless war, like. Well, it's all about whose dick is bigger, bigger, really, on some gay shit, bro. Like, on, like, no disrespect to the gays, but, on, like, on some fucking, like, lower, like, super egotistical manly shit. Like, on some, like, on some real faggotry shit, bro. Like, why do you feel the need to want to overcome anything, bro? Like, on some shit, like, all right, if it's over oil, okay, do that. Stay, keep doing regular work. Don't be on some big nuclear bomb shit. That shit's stupid, bro. You're going to cheat the fucking youth of a chance to live, bro. And, like, on some real shit, like, from all the way from, because I've been watching the whole Korea thing, like, with, with the bombing and shit, bro. It's like, like, really and truly, like, even Kim Jong-un couldn't call himself a real leader if he doesn't take the youth into, ad, like, doesn't, if he's not going to administer the youth and be, like, a, a, a leader to the youth and inspire the youth to want to maintain the equilibrium, then how are you a leader? How are you a leader if you don't understand the fine line in between? How are you a leader if you feel like you can maintain both, both or be of one? You have to understand the gray aspect of it because black and white are gray. People don't say there people say there is nothing but black and white, but really and truly, it, there's gray. Black and white make gray. So if you don't understand the gray process of it, then then how can you call yourself a leader? So that's just just my outlook on it. I won't be happy unless human minds understand the gray so we can move forward and reach the futuristic point of perspective because i even i was even watching this ronald reagan um he was he was he was speaking he was speaking about he was like to be honest he doesn't feel like the humans would unify themselves unless we were working uh, unless we were fighting an out-of-worldly being he feels like the, the humans would not unify themselves unless we we're fighting something outside of this planet. And he says, Who, who's to say that there is nothing already here on some weird shit? Okay, <laughs> but let me, let me relate that back to this. Is Do you feel like the average person spends their whole life fighting against this idea of you know prosperity, making something out of themselves, but you're super young and you just achieved all that very quickly? And because that- I wasn't willed. I didn't have parents. I didn't have someone to, like, bro, your parents, like, can be your biggest blessing, but they can't be your biggest curse, because I didn't have someone trying to mold me. I was molded by the universe in itself. I was a spawn for the universe. It was weird. Like, you can probably see it in my eyes. I, like, nigga, there was a time where I was dark. Like, my eyes were dark. Like, it was a, there was a darkness in me, bro. And I, it was because I was thrown into the universe, bro, to figure, to, like, understand the energy and understand everything around me, like, on some weird shit. And it made me who I was. My pain molded me. It, it, like, bro, I was, I was pressured and pressured and pressured until, like, I, I found the diamond. 
but it's not my diamond is not even even my vessel. My diamond is not my physical being because I don't even publicize my physical being. I publicize my mind, my state of mind. My state of mind is what's important. All right, I got you. Hey, I miss you. Miss you too. We'll see you soon. Maybe. Uh, you 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 probably want to fucking French kiss me right now, you weirdo. I want to French kiss your girlfriend. You gonna let me fuck her? He wants to French kiss you, babe. How you feel about that? Sorry. Nah, she, she, she's a one French kiss kind of guy, kind of gal, you know. I think she hates me. I think your girlfriend hates me. I don't hate you. No, she doesn't hate you. She, I watched, she, I I watched th- your video on, on Smash or Pass rappers. And she Why did everyone see that? She passed. She passed me, and I was so sad. I was like, no. Oh really? Yeah, I thought she. Cause she said she said yes to fucking G Easy. I was like, yo, why wouldn't you fuck? Why would you fuck me? But you fuck G Easy. Yeah, but I look like G Easy's grandpa, so I can see where she came up on that. <laughs> That's some awesome, weird, shit. awesome super white supremacist shit. Nah. <laughs> Don't do that to me, bro. You know the woke people are watching right now. Huh? <laughs> Don't call me a white supremacist. You know the white people or the woke people are watching right now. No, everybody just needs to fucking relax, bro. Like I like really and truthfully, bro. Like. Everybody just gotta fucking chill, bro. And anybody that doesn't want to chill, we should just fucking kill them, bro. I'm dead ass serious, bro. That sounds kind of that's like a Hitler type program. Like we're just gonna we're gonna round people up. What are you talking about? We we all have to come together as one because we all are are one and see what the fucking problem is. And then usually it's just one fucking idiot, bro. (laughs) Who's the idiot? Is it Donald Trump? I ain't gonna call no names. I'm on that le- I'm on that level to where if what I say out my mouth it can affect me. I ain't gonna call no names, bro. But it's just like it's, it's bigger than Donald Trump. Congress runs the world, bro. Don- if anybody think Donald Trump is anything, bro, he's not, bro. Congress run- runs the world. He- for Donald Trump to even want to wipe his fucking ass, he has to go to Congress. Now people don't even know about who's really in Congress. That's what I'm saying. I'm pretty so, sure you can look it up. It's not that simple, bro. Mm, okay. Government official, you you know what the government is, but you've never seen them. And there's government officials that you will never see. The deep state. Exactly. It goes deeper than just the eye, bro. It goes deep, deeper than the physical plane, bro. You got to realize the government is very, very fucking smart. And they're smart for a reason. Because there's people in the government that want to maintain... What we've maintained for so long. Order. Now, maybe corrupt people, but there's good people. Just like there's good in the world, there's evil in the world too. All right. Hey. All right. Let's end this for real. It was a fun, fun little chat. Yeah. Don't, don't, um, don't suck dick while you're out there. All right. I see, I see a lot of, a lot of vloggers turning gay and shit. Don't be one of those. <laughs> Who? Who are you lumping me in with? Uh, I feel like I feel like I feel like you would probably fuck um uh, what what um what's another vlogger's name? Jake Paul. What's that? What's that strong? Yeah. Look, what's that? What's that strong looking nigga named uh Lena the Lena the the pug? She's strong, you think? No, nah, she's weak. <laughs> she she looks like she could bench press two fifty. <laughs> she's gonna take that as a compliment. She said. I just like pushing y'all buttons. I like seeing how you respond. You're you're such a man, though. I fuck with you. Yeah, because I'm scared. Like, of, I, I don't. I wouldn't leave you around, my girl. When you when you said that about Taylor, that hurt my feelings. What I say? Cause she's not a, she's not leftovers, bro. She really is. She really is a fucking good person, bro. Uh, like, we, I, I didn't know you were gonna let her read my fucking text, you psycho. I didn't let her read your text. I saw it myself and was sad. I saw it. I was sad. I, texting your buddy and calling a girl your leftovers is just locker room talk, man. Yeah, I don't believe in that. Show. I never call the girls my leftovers. I've never felt the need to be possessive like that. I'm proud that she's a part of uh, both of our lineages. Yeah. She just want to feel the energy, bro. We all just want to feel the energy, bro. I want to feel your energy. But you gay as fuck. <laughs> Yo, your boyfriend gay as shit. Yo, you want to fuck this dude? Whoa. No, that nigga's sexy. Hey, fuck him. Hey. Hey. Nah, 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 that nigga got big titties. Hey, fuck him. Nah, that nigga got big titties. Hey, fuck him. Nah, that nigga got big titties. Hey, fuck him. Nah, that nigga got big titties. Hey, fuck him. Nah, that nigga got big titties. Hey, fuck him. Nah, that nigga got big titties. Hey, fuck him. Nah, that nigga got big titties. Hey, fuck him. Nah
Alright, I gotta go, I gotta go. You look drunk. Love you, bro. You off that Molly? Hell no. Bye, you, bitch. I'm gonna find out you're off the shrooms tomorrow. I'm really not. I would never be. Alright, love you. Love you too, bro. Peace, bro.